Hey there, science fans! Welcome back to another exciting episode where we dive into the fascinating world of chemistry and its impact on our daily lives. Today, let's talk about a group of chemicals that are, for lack of a better word, forever. These chemicals have been making headlines and raising concerns among scientists and environmentalists alike. We call them PFAS, short for per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances. These are a large group of man-made chemicals that have been used in various industries around the globe since the 1940s. These chemicals are used in tons of products we use every day, from non-stick cookware to firefighting foam, and even in food packaging. They make our lives more convenient, but at what cost? But here's the catch, PFAS don't break down in the environment. Unlike many other chemicals that degrade over time, PFAS remain intact and persist in our surroundings. That's right, they stick around, potentially for thousands of years. This means that every time PFAS are released into the environment, they accumulate and build up, leading to long-term contamination. Hence the nickname Forever Chemicals. This persistence is what makes them so problematic and why they have garnered so much attention. This persistence means they can build up in our environment and our bodies over time, and that's where things get concerning. Studies have shown that PFAS can accumulate in the blood, liver, and kidneys, potentially leading to adverse health effects. We're talking potential health problems, my friends. Exposure to high levels of PFAS has been linked to various health issues including cancer, liver damage, and immune system effects. It's a serious matter that requires our attention, so let's dive a little deeper and understand why we should be concerned about these forever chemicals and what we can do about them. We'll explore the sources of PFAS contamination, the impact on human health and the environment, and the steps we can take to reduce our exposure and mitigate their effects. Stay tuned, because this is information you won't want to miss. Now you might be thinking, Bill, these chemicals sound scary, but I'm sure they're tightly regulated, right? Well, that's where things get even more unsettling. Studies have found PFAS in the blood of almost all Americans. Let that sink in for a moment. Almost everyone in the United States has these forever chemicals circulating in their bodies. This widespread contamination is a huge red flag. It tells us that these chemicals are everywhere and we're constantly being exposed. But how are they getting into our bodies? And what kind of health problems can they cause? Let's explore those questions in the next sections. Here's the thing about PFAS that really makes them a cause for concern. They've been linked to some serious health problems. We're talking about an increased risk of certain cancers, immune system suppression, liver damage, and even developmental issues in children. And the scariest part? Scientists are still uncovering the full extent of the health risk posed by these chemicals. It's like playing a game where you don't know all the rules, and the stakes are your health. We need more research to fully understand the long-term impacts of PFAS exposure, but the evidence we have so far is enough to raise serious alarm bells. So, how are these potentially harmful chemicals ending up in our bodies? One of the main culprits is contaminated drinking water. You see, PFAS can easily seep into groundwater from industrial sites, landfills, and even firefighting training areas. And once they're in the groundwater, they can contaminate the water we drink. This is a major problem because we need water to survive. But if our drinking water is contaminated with PFAS, we're essentially poisoning ourselves with every sip. That's why it's crucial to understand the quality of our water and take steps to ensure it's free from these harmful chemicals. Section 5. The Packaging Problem, Lack of FDA Action on PFAS in Food PFAS or PER and polyfluoroalkyl substances are a group of man-made chemicals that have been used in various industries around the globe since the 1940s. They are found in a wide range of consumer products that people use daily. Drinking water isn't the only way PFAS can sneak into our systems. These chemicals are incredibly persistent in the environment and in the human body, meaning they don't break down and can accumulate over time. Remember those non-stick pans and waterproof jackets we talked about? These items are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to PFAS exposure. Well, PFAS are also used in food packaging, like microwave popcorn bags and fast food wrappers. These chemicals are used because they resist grease, oil, water, and heat, making them ideal for food packaging. The problem is, these chemicals can migrate from the packaging into our food, especially when heated. 
This means that every time we enjoy a bag of microwave popcorn or unwrap a fast food burger, we could be ingesting these harmful substances. Now you'd think the FDA, the agency in charge of food safety would be all over this, right? The FDA is supposed to ensure that our food supply is safe, sanitary, and properly labeled. Unfortunately, they haven't been as proactive as we'd hoped. Despite the growing body of evidence showing the dangers of PFAS, the FDA has been slow to take meaningful action to limit our exposure to these chemicals. While some states have taken steps to ban PFAS in food packaging, we need nationwide action to truly protect ourselves. Local efforts are commendable, but without a unified federal response, the problem persists. We need the FDA to step up and take decisive action to regulate and ultimately eliminate PFAS from our food packaging to ensure the safety and health of all Americans. Section 6. Filtering out the risk practical solutions for PFAS exposure. Okay, enough doom and gloom. The good news is that there are things we can do to minimize our exposure to PFAS. One of the most effective methods is using a water filter that's certified to remove PFAS. These filters are becoming increasingly common and affordable, so there's no excuse not to invest in one. By filtering your water, you're essentially creating a barrier between yourself and these harmful chemicals. It's a simple yet powerful step towards protecting your health and the health of your family. Section 7. Building up your defenses. Tolerance as a strategy. In this section we will explore how tolerance can be a powerful tool in our arsenal against environmental toxins. Now I know what you're thinking. Bill, is filtering my water enough? It's a common question and a valid concern. And you're right to ask. Filtering your water is indeed a crucial first step, but it's not the end-all solution. While filtering your water is a great start, it's not a foolproof solution. There are many contaminants that can slip through even the best filters. PFAS or per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances are everywhere, and complete avoidance is nearly impossible. These chemicals are found in water, air, soil, and even in the food we eat. So alongside minimizing exposure, we also need to think about building up our tolerance. This means making our bodies more resilient to the toxins we can't avoid. Think of it like this. If your body's defenses are strong and resilient, it's better equipped to handle exposure to harmful substances. Just like how a well-trained athlete can endure more physical stress, a well-prepared body can better manage environmental stressors. How do we build up this tolerance? It's a multifaceted approach that involves several lifestyle changes and habits. Well, a healthy lifestyle is key. Eating a balanced diet rich in vitamins and minerals, exercising regularly to keep your body fit and active, and getting enough sleep can all contribute to a stronger immune system. Additionally, practices like meditation and mindfulness can help reduce stress, which in turn supports your overall health. Staying hydrated, taking necessary supplements, and regular health checkups are also important. These steps ensure that your body is in the best possible condition to fight off any unwanted intruders. Remember, building tolerance is not about accepting defeat but about empowering yourself. It's about creating a lifestyle that supports your health and well-being, making you stronger and more resilient in the face of environmental challenges. Section 8. Beyond the Filter Additional Steps for Minimizing Exposure Besides filtering our water and building up our tolerance, there are other practical steps we can take to minimize our exposure to PFAS. For starters, we can be mindful of the products we buy. Opt for PFAS-free cookware, clothing, and personal care products whenever possible. Additionally, we can reduce our consumption of takeout and processed foods, as these often come with PFAS-laden packaging. By making conscious choices about the products we use and the food we eat, we can significantly reduce our exposure to these harmful chemicals. Section 9. The Power of Awareness, Spreading the Word About PFAS But here's the thing, folks, it's not just about individual action. We need to raise awareness about PFAS and the risks they pose. Talk to your friends, family, and neighbors. Share what you've learned about these forever chemicals and encourage them to take action, too. The more people who know about PFAS, the louder our collective voice becomes. And when our voice is loud enough, it can lead to real change. Section 10. Demand Change. Advocating for a PFAS-free future. We need to demand action from our elected officials. Urge them to support legislation that phases out the use of PFAS and cleans up existing contamination. 
We deserve to live in a world free from these harmful chemicals, and our voices have the power to make that happen. Remember, our elected officials work for us. It's our responsibility to hold them accountable and ensure they prioritize our health and well-being. Section 11. Our Health, Our Responsibility Taking Action Against PFAS We've covered a lot of ground today but here's the bottom line. PFAS are a serious threat to our health and the health of our planet. But we're not powerless. By taking action to minimize our exposure, building up our tolerance and advocating for change, we can protect ourselves and future generations from these forever chemicals. Remember, knowledge is power. Now that you know about the hidden dangers of PFAS, use that knowledge to make informed choices and demand a healthier, safer future for all.